Hello, this is a Octalis Framework Level 2 analysis of Noom is a weight loss app and it helps users stay fit and hit their fitness goals. Uh, users receive a customized to-do list each day and they get personal support from a coach and they get uh, progress tracking through the app and personalized feedback after the end of each day. Uh, this is a bit what the discovery stage looks like, onboarding, scaffolding, and the end game. So as you can see, it's quite well balanced and we'll go into more details about uh, each stage. Uh, the discovery stage, Noom really relies on a lot of narrative. So core drive number one, they try to create this epic meaning and tell users that they can do it and make users kind of feel special. They also rely on social proof and they show a lot of uh, claims like percentage and how many people have hit their goals with, with the app. And they use uh, also Core Drive 6 with scarcity. A few other things that they do in the discovery stage is uh, again, a little bit more narrative and telling users they're in control and a bit of that uh, hero effect. Um, use countdown timers uh, for their offers, limited time offers. And then they guide users really well through the payment options with glowing choice and using conformity anchors. They're saying like 78% of people have chosen this option. During onboarding, uh, they focus on a few different core drives. Here you can see progress bar, so core drive number two, accomplishment. They also use mentorship. Uh, you don't want to disappoint your coach and let him down, so you, you stay on track. And again, core drive number six, scarcity, with appointment dynamics, because each day you log into the app, you receive new challenges and uh, new milestones. During scaffolding, they use uh, core drive number two, development. Uh, you get achievement symbols every time you accomplish a task or you do well on a quiz. There is ownership in the process because you're at the end of the day responsible for your exercises and for your diet. So there's a lot of ownership going on in the process. And core drive number five, social influence, because there is social groups and you can chat with other users who are also trying to lose weight and you can join chat rooms and, and talk to each other. During the end game, the app relies on the rock star effect because you accomplished something really great. Uh, that, you know, you started overweight and now you've hit your, your desired weight. So um, they really rely on that accomplishment uh, core drive. Also social influence, uh, core drive number five, because now you can share with your friends this app and they also dangle some rewards in front of you if uh, your friends join. And the sunken cost prison, core drive number eight, because after you've done so well and you lost this weight and you worked so hard, you don't want to lose that. So they want to, they try to keep you around by, um, you know, making you not want to lose what you've, the progress you've made. So in conclusion, uh, they use a really great mixture of core drives to attract and to motivate users. Uh, they use a healthy combination of white hat and black hat gamification to keep the users engaged throughout the process. And they appeal to both intrinsic and extrinsic factors. Uh, so they hook users early and they keep their attention for, for a while. Overall, I thought this app did really well. Uh, it didn't feel like they use too many uh, black hat gamification or too many extrinsic factors. So uh, I think they used a really great mixture of core drives. At some points it felt like they were using too many core drives or too many gamification tricks at once, but uh, I think that's something that they can solve easily with just by simplifying the app a little bit. Thank you for your time.